So a couple days ago, I made a video about taking a Golang application and turning it into a Docker container. And while I was making that video, uh, it kind of occurred to me that, you know, maybe it takes, it deserves a little deeper dive to talk a little bit about Docker and exactly what it is, because it's not necessarily like the end-all be-all when it comes to containers. Docker has become kind of synonymous with, with the word containers. And containers are Docker and Docker and containers, kind of like Kleenex is facial tissue and Band-Aids are, uh, you know, bandages. Containers are actually a part of, they're a part of the Linux kernel. But Docker itself is uh, is is really what kind of revolutionized this, right? They, they turned containers, which was something that was built into the Linux kernel, a fully functional uh, tool, and turned it into something that the masses could use. But in the video that I made, I used Docker Desktop and I used Docker Hub. And as I was going through that, I started talking about how, you know, Docker uh, made some changes to his licensing agreement where now you can't use Docker Desktop uh, if you work for a big company. And, you know, Docker Hub has limitations where you can have as many public repositories as you want, but you can only have, I think it's one private repository. And it got me got me thinking about this whole thing that maybe I should talk a little bit about Docker as a company versus Docker as a tool. Uh, let's just switch over to the computer real quick here. Docker helped to the Oper, Open Container Initiative. I'm sure, you can see it on the screen, but the Open Con Container Initiative is an open governance structure for the express purpose of creating open industry standards around container formats and runtimes. Uh, all that blah 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 is to say that you can make containers, uh, you know, without using Docker per se. Um, but their tools are Docker Desktop, which is a, a product that you can, in before, used to be able to get for free, and Docker Hub, which has always been a, a bit of a paid product, but there was always a free, like, entry level. So Docker themselves, they're a company. They're trying to make money, um, just like any other company. And if you're a company like Docker, you essentially somewhat invented the way that the modern internet right now, the modern web hosting works uh, uh, on this planet. Um, you know, I, I can I can feel for that. There's, there's a really good reason that Docker would want to make money. So they started changing around their, their rules a little bit. And if we go back real quick to Docker Desktop, they've not hidden this, right? That Docker subscription service uh, has changed. And the way that they changed it was to say that if you're a small business or if you're a just a just somebody working on your own, you can continue to use Docker Desktop. But if you work for a large company, and let's see what it is, it's uh, more than 250 employees uh, or more than uh, 10 million in avenue, uh, annual revenue, you have to start paying for it. And that, you know, I, I, I see both sides of it. I, I always try to see both sides of these situations because sometimes it's sometimes it's important for a company to make money um, and they obviously, you know, need to need to make money like any other company. But at the same time, uh, people have been using this stuff for years and I'm not sure they can, that everyone completely understands how to do this stuff without Docker Desktop. So maybe we should talk about alternatives uh, to, to Docker Desktop, but... Before I even get into that, I think it's important to understand that Docker, while you may use it on a Mac or use it on Windows, um, Docker actually only runs on Linux. Uh, you, you, if you're using it on a Mac, you, it looks like you're using it on your Mac, but the, but you're not really, and that's kind of the value of Docker Desktop. If you try to use Docker on a Mac without installing Docker Desktop, it, it simply it just doesn't work. You can't. You can't even really install it. So, what Docker Desktop is actually doing behind the scenes is 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 pretty cool. It's it's actually using a virtualization uh, type of system. I think it's called XHive or something like that. It's it's uh, a lightweight uh, virtualization platform, and it does install Linux on your Mac, and uh, then it it manages to mount the file system. So your local Mac files work on the on the Linux uh, VM. And then your Docker CLI, while it's the CLI itself is running on your Mac, the commands are being passed to a uh, Docker daemon that is running on Linux. And all of this is happening on Linux uh, 
behind the scenes. So there is value to Docker Desktop, but there's also some alternatives to it, um, especially now that the licensing has changed, things you can you can download and, and use for free. They're not quite as perfect, but they work. So we should probably just take a look at those. A couple that stand out that I've tried myself personally, uh, one of them is called Podman. And Podman is a, uh, you can install it with Homebrew. The truth is, is that it, it essentially tries to replace the Docker command. So where before you would Docker run or Docker build, you can run Podman run or Podman build. That's not even the challenging part about it because obviously you could still do that with Docker. You could still run Docker on your machine uh, without Docker desktop as long as you have that virtualization going on behind the scenes. It also has this uh, Podman machine init and Podman machine start. And to me, that's the part that's kind of replacing the, the, the piece of Docker desktop that you need in order for all of this work, right? It's, it's doing the VM part and putting the VM on your machine and making the whole thing seem seamless like it's, like it's working behind the scenes with, you know, with no issues. So uh, Podman, again, it's, it's pretty easy to install. Just uh, brew install Podman and, and you know, run, through, run through the whole thing. And then you can use Podman instead of the Docker command. Uh, I even went as far as seeing some people uh, symlink the, uh, the word Docker to Podman, and then they can just use Docker. They can type the word Docker and it works just fine. I don't know, it seems a little weird, but it, it you know if your brain is programmed to use the word uh, Docker, you can continue to do it that way. The other one uh, that I've uh, seen here is called uh, Lima. And uh, Colima is actually part of a project called Lima. And, uh, and Lina, Lima is, is short for Linux on a Mac. And again, it's, a, it's, a, it's the virtualization. It's the important part, right? It's running Linux in a small VM on your Mac. And, and so Colima, uh, containers in Lima, right? So <laughs> it also means containers on Linux, on Linux on Mac, right? Okay, so we, you know, we get the point. You can also install... Uh, Kalima very easily using brew and then you start it up they give you you know basic uh, cases here but Kalima start will get you the virtualization to start up and everything else and then it, you can actually just use the docker command so you you install the docker command line utilities and it just it it works because Kalima has all of the rest of the the infrastructure running behind the scenes in the VM, just like Docker Desktop does. So that's a couple options in terms of things that you can try to replace Docker Desktop. One, if you just want to try different things. And two, if you maybe want to, uh, you work for a company that that doesn't want to pay for the license, but you still need to do Docker work and you feel like you don't want to be violating the the terms as a, as a personal thing. The other thing I wanted to talk about was Docker Hub. Now, Docker Hub is a place for you to push your Docker images, and it stores them, and then other people can pull them down, and, and you know, it, it's fairly basic functionality. Um, but again, Docker, they're a company. They started this as a service, uh, you know, along with many other services that they, that they offer. Um, but, you know, a registry for Docker containers, and they were one of the first ones to do it. If not the first one to do it, I don't, I don't know. Somebody check me on that. But there are many, many alternatives to this one because there, this is pretty much a standardized process at this point, being able to store uh, your Docker artifacts in, in different registries. So I'm just going to kind of tear through those real quick. So there's every cloud has one of these. So Google um, actually has two of them. Google has the, uh, the container registry. And then they also have artifact registry and both of them are uh, similar things. It's just that artifact registry is specifically for containers and can, um, no container registry is specifically for containers and artifact registry can house other things. You can put Helm charts in there. You can JavaScript packages, like packages and things in container registry and it'll handle all of it. So it's just kind of like the next evolution in the product. Azure has Azure container registry. Again, it's a, uh, you know, 
it it's compatible with OCI images. AWS has Amazon uh, Elastic Container Registry. The only difference between all of these products and Docker Hub itself is just like the URL that you use to pull and push the images. Uh, GitHub has one too, right? So GitHub Packages now offers the ability to store Docker images. And uh, you can see here, because they give you an example, right? So if you were going to do, you would do Docker login and then log into ghcr.io, which is the GitHub part. And then um, you can tag your images. And of course, if you have a name, then then you tag your image with the full URL of where it gets sent, which is the how it works to send it to another registry. And then you can push it up there. So the, I guess the main advantage to using Docker Hub, if I wanted to pull this image, right, I'm just going to pull be more city one slash blah, blah, blah. And it, it'll pull it. I don't have to give the full, the full length URL to pull it from which Docker has one. I honestly don't even know what it is, but if you want to pull from any one of these other registries, you have to provide the example with GitHub here, the ghcr.io slash blah, 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 to get, to get the image that you want. So there's a whole Docker ecosystem in there. And I thought it was important to just kind of talk about some of that because in the video that I did, I kind of just ran through it like, like Docker Hub and Docker Desktop were the only way to do this. And I also used containers and Docker images interchangeably as if they were exactly the same thing. But in truth, they're not. And so... Whenever given options and, and you know and, and talking about containers, if you're in a group of people that know a whole lot about it, some of these words matter to some of these people, and and it's important to you know to use them carefully. And on top of that, you know when you're when you're looking especially at registries, it's going to be important to think about what choices you have out there, right? It's it's not just Docker Hub, especially these cloud registries like the the Google container registry or the Amazon registry or the Azure registry, if your whole platform is on one of those uh, clouds, then you may just want to use those, right? The, the, the pricing is uh, I, pretty darn cheap in, in reality because it's not their primary product. I, I even think that for some of these, they just charge you for ingress, egress, and storage there's no like service fee for using the service they they don't really care because they know that you're if you're likely using i don't know uh google container registry you're probably using google's uh kubernetes offering as well and that's the expensive part so you know these are kind of like just little add-ons where they're gonna nickel and dime you a little bit so uh, i hope that was helpful i i i think it's important to take the time to learn some of these concepts, especially if you're new to development or new to containers, just to completely understand what it is that you're working with, right? Just following the tutorial will get the job done, but do you actually know what it is uh, that you're working on? So uh, if this was help for you, helpful to you, uh, leave a comment because I, I really would like to know how, how helpful this kind of stuff is and if this is the type of video that you would like to see more of. Um, this video is certainly not edited like a lot of my other uh, videos where I'll do you know fast forwarding or B-roll or any of that other stuff. I'm pretty much just talking to the camera. So uh, feedback is appreciated. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Have a good one.